Are you looking to set up automated deployments to Kubernetes? Are you interested in implementing release strategies such as Canary, uh, Blue Green, and uh, let's say A-B testing and possibly more? Then I have something interesting for you to know about and that is GitOps. And I'm gonna talk about four key principles of GitOps, which will not only help you understand what is GitOps, but also help you um, understand how you would get started implementing it. So why don't we get on with it? Let's first start with an interesting fact. GitOps as a term was coined by VWorks, which was originally involved in creating one of the most popular network plugins for Kubernetes. And they coined this term back in 2017 when they started working on a project called as Flux. Now, on to the principles. So let's talk about the principles of GitOps and why it is important to know is because this will also help you understand how to implement GitOps and how it would really works. Now GitOps as a word stands uh, for operations, running out of operations out of Git and what kind of operations is, you know, even though um, it could be anything, um, uh, right now you see GitOps um, spoken about in the context of uh, deploying to Kubernetes primarily. Now, what are the four key principles which drive GitOps? The first principle is you start writing everything as in the form of a declarative configurations uh, to the platform where you are trying to automate this de these deployments. And if you look at Kubernetes, everything is exposed as an API resource. So you can automate everything, manage everything and, and write everything as a YAML code. And that's a declarative configuration. And it could not it, it's not just about you know application deployments and services and uh, pods and uh, you know uh, the controllers and so on it is also about the operations activities like creating namespaces defining quotas defining the roles defining network policies everything can be codified and written as the declarative configuration so that is the first principles of GitOps, and that's what you begin with by writing everything as a code once you have written everything as a code, what do you do next? That's quite obvious. You take that code and put it in get. And that is where this word get comes from. That is partial. Uh, there's step number three, which also brings get based workflows, which I'll talk about in a few seconds. So um, you store the desired state in the git repository, which is quite obvious. Uh, you take that code and put it in the revision control system. Number three is where you it says the principle says uh, apply approved changes automatically. But what they are actually talking about is the Git based workflows, because once you start revision controlling with Git, you can create branching branches, you can define branching policies, you can implement all of those branching models and uh, so on trunk based development and Git flow, Git hub flow and whatnot. And uh, what it comes down to is uh, the concept of pull requests, and that is where you set up the approval. You know, you uh, define branches, let's say a main branch and the release branch and anything that goes into the release branch should be approved uh, as per this example here. And uh, that could mean you raise a pull request, it gets code reviewed, you get feedback from Jenkins. So you set up all those best practices which are already available in, with the Git based workflows and developers have been implementing it for years and years. So you just bring it in for the Kubernetes deployment or deployments in general as well or running operations out of Git if you want to call it as a generic way. And whatever gets approved, is basically whatever goes in the release branch or the branch from where you want to deploy to Kubernetes. And we are talking about the Kubernetes deployment code here. So that could include your deployments, that could include your uh, service configurations, ingress configurations, that could be um, your stateful sets, your network policies, your quotas, anything uh, that you want to deploy and apply to Kubernetes goes in here. And whatever gets approved, gets up applied to Kubernetes automatically. How does it get applied to Kubernetes automatically is where the fourth part and the most important part here, the tooling part comes in. And that is where, you know, you, uh, the fourth principle says check and correct with a software agent. So where does the agent sit? Typically it sits inside the Kubernetes cluster, one of the Kubernetes environment. If it is flux, it sits inside every Kubernetes environment and uses a pull model. If it is an Argo CD, it probably sits in one of the Kubernetes environment and has access to all the Kubernetes clusters that you have uh, and it uses a push model. That is the fundamental difference between the two most popular tools which include flux and Argo CD. 
So the fourth principle says check and correct with the software agent and that agent is where the flux or ergo comes in and that pulls the changes. So whatever changes get approved in the Git repository are then uh, pulled by the agent and looked at by the agent. And then that is automatically applied to the Kubernetes environment. And this is where the missing piece comes in because Kubernetes does not give you a way to set up automated deployments. Well, you can define the release strategy like rolling update or recreate by default, or you can add more uh, by using uh, you know additional technologies like service meshes and whatnot. But there is no software or the tool sitting there unless you write one or unless you install an additional one to automatically deploy to Kubernetes. And that is the gap that the tool fills in. Uh, and I just mentioned about the two important tools, um, two most popular tools. Um, one is Flux, which is created by Weaveworks. The second tool is Ergo CD. Ergo CD was originally created by Intuit. Uh, for their internal purpose, but they open sourced it. Ergo CD is also very popular um, in, in, you know, in a lot of organizations today who have Kubernetes clusters. And I see more of Ergo CD being used uh, than Flux, but Flux is also an interesting and useful product. Uh, I think the part of the reason also is because Ergo CD is simpler to use and set up and comes with a UI versus Flux does not. And Flux is slightly uh, complex to learn, but it can help you do a lot of interesting, sophisticated things. And uh, in fact, I've created a course on uh, uh, Flux and GitOps, which is published by Linux Foundation, which you can check um, in, in the, let's say, um, card right here. So um, those are the two tools, useful tools, and I'll probably write, um, uh, create another content comparing both. And uh, then I also see something called as Open GitOps Now. Uh, I haven't really seen what it is, but it seems to be started by Linux Foundation CNCF itself. So it looks like an op uh, interesting product. So keep an eye on go open GitOps and where it is heading if you want to uh, be in the GitOps uh, space and start using this technology. So those are the four key principles of GitOps and that helps you understand what is GitOps and uh, how do you get started with it? Well, I hope that got in, got you interested into GitOps. And if you are, you could either pick up Flux or Ergo CD. Both are interesting technologies, use slightly different approach, uh, but both are interesting technologies uh, to get started with. And I have a free course linked below, which can help you get uh, a better understanding of what is GitOps with a demonstration. And uh, that is with the Flux. So you may want to check that out as well. So that's it for today. And thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.